History told us it was always going to be an uphill climb for Elche against Barcelona in the Liga. They hadn't defeated the Catalans in the Liga since December of 1974, and the last Elche goal in this fixture came in 1978. Barcelona had also kept the clean sheet in eight straight matches against Elche heading into the match, so now with nine with this 2-0 victory, this becomes the most all-time clean sheets against a single opponent in the Liga. Moving back to this year, Elche were also winless in their last six Liga matches, so it's not like Elche were in good form either. And we expected Almiron to favor a 5-3-2 or a compact 4-4-2 and get everybody behind the ball. Now before I continue on with this match review, I do want to give a special thank you to all those who watched me today on FC Barcelona's official match center, so thanks so much for that. But let's get back to what you came here for. The strongest possible 11 that Coleman could have fielded, I think was on the field for this one, with Des still making his way back and Messi suspended. The only real choice was Umtiti over Lang Lay, with Ngretha playing as the right back. As I said before, I think Umtiti's game complements Araujo's much better, and right now between Lang Lay and Araujo, Araujo is the one who's untouchable. Of all the talk of those center backs, it was a center back turned right back for this one. Ngretha, a poor start from him to this match, even with Elche missing their top goal and assist getter in the left winger Fidel, Elche still wanted to come down the left side and attack Mangueta is what they did. On the other side, Brothwaite was out on the wing for Barcelona, defending, but once Barca got a bit more control near Elche's goal, he headed towards the middle to sit in that half space. Just like Griezmann, they were trying to get runs in through that half space and open up the middle of the field or allow balls to come down the flank. Elche was defending in a 4-5-1. I guess you could even say it was a 5-3-2 at times or a 4-2-3-1 that was quite, quite compact. But regardless of whatever numbers you throw out there, the ball movement from Barcelona was not fast enough. They had to circulate the ball quicker. Elche's fullbacks were also tracking Alba and Mingueza and weren't giving them the wings when they had to sit deep. So the deeper Barca's fullbacks got into the attack, the more numbers Elche had defending. Elche himself had some pretty good buildups, and they got their first shot off in the 21st minute, but it was good coverage on Marajo and Mtiti. Alba shot wide in the 29th minute, coming from a Dembele cross off a corner. It was the first moment in this match when you could tell that one defender alone couldn't touch Dembele. It was on him, that being Dembele, to make the right decisions, and he really could have been the pivotal figure in this match. 34th minute, Elche defense keeping their shape well, but still lunging at balls. Dembele sets up Pedri, who couldn't get the shot off. Instead, it's Busquets who can't get enough on his shot to score what is his one goal per year or whatever it is, one goal every two years. For as much possession as Barca had, as much as they were on the front foot, they did earn that goal coming about six minutes before halftime. It was a wonderful run from Griezmann that finished off this sequence, but I want to start where there was an inside-outside from Barcelona. They controlled the middle, sprayed it out wide, De Jong and Pedri up through the middle, out to Brothwaite, and really, really good cross from Brothwaite. I didn't think he was very good against Cornea, but he bounced back at least with a good cross here, and I thought he was solid, that being Braithwaite in this match. Diego Gonzalez almost an own goal, but De Jong gets the goal because he's the one who puts it over the line. De Jong now goals in three of his last six matches in good form. And not just good form, as in he's put a few matches together, but he's been solid since the formation changed. So I'm starting to think that this is now who De Jong can be at FC Barcelona. Yes, he's going to have poor matches, but we saw for about a year and two months where he wasn't himself. He wasn't the same player that we were talking about at Ajax. And since this 4-3-3 formation change that Coleman instituted about a month ago, De Jong has been much, much closer to the levels of which we expected him. And in the second half, it did show. Moving the ball a lot quicker with Barcelona to start the second, particularly the combinations between Pedri, De Jong, and Busquets, solidifying that midfield. Four chances as well created by Pedri. For as dominating as Barca were, though, 56 minute comes around, and this one could have been 1-1. Mingueza, an awful giveaway, as I said. Probably Mingueza's worst match in the first team, to my money. Yes, no goals were scored, but I think almost any other team who had any other dangerous forwards or wingers, and this ball is in the back of the net at least once because of the mistakes from Mingueza today. So hopefully the Catalan can bounce back in the next one. Mingoni, though, can't finish past Ter Stegen. He had a 1v1. Ter Stegen comes out, gets the leg out strong, and denies the LJ forward. So Ter Stegen, in the one and only time he had to come up big, he comes up big here. 30 seconds later, Dembele forcing as just a difficult save from Badia. And for Badia, he once again, in what the fifth of seven matches for Barcelona, had a goalkeeper for the opposition stand on their heads. And Edgar Badia, the main reason why this scoreline wasn't uglier in Barca's favor. But Barca did struggle to put this match away. It was disjointed again in that second half. Some of the best attacks coming from good balls through the middle from Umtiti to Pedri, breaking through those lines and setting Pedri up with space to turn and run into in the middle of the field. 
Brothwaite also moved much more central as the game went on. You could tell that that was an instruction coming from Komen. And for me, it was almost a precursor to the substitutions that never seemed to be coming, that Brothwaite was moving his positioning. 68th minute, Busquets gets another yellow. As we've seen, tired legs from Busquets in the second half of these matches. Now he's going to miss Athletic Club. He'll play against Rio midweek, and Pianic will get Athletic. But that one's on Coleman. Coleman should have taken Busquets out, not because another yellow means he was going to miss Athletic Club, but because he was getting tired in that match. And you do have Pjanic just sitting there on the bench. It didn't make much sense. Five subs. Instead, the first one comes in in the 74th minute. Trincao for Dembele. For Trincao, I may be trying to make something out of nothing, but it was good to see him come off with some life after starting against Cornea midweek. He got a good shot off, and he was very close with the header a few minutes later. One of these days, one of those chances will go in, and we might get to see a new, more confident Trincao. Because as I keep saying, the raw abilities that he has are ones that I thought would translate. And yes, it takes time to acclimate at FC Barcelona and at the Camp Nou, but Trincao is almost there. You can see that it's almost there, and I think he's just missing some confidence. Before the second sub came in in the 87th minute, all I have written here is subs, question mark, and it's a broken record. Either put Conrad De La Fuente in that game or don't put him on the first team bench at all when Barcelona B are playing on the same day. It doesn't make sense to me in a match against Elche, who are one of the worst teams in the Liga this season. Before this match, they were tied with four other teams for having conceded the most goals in the Liga this season. And this was a match that was calling out for wingers. So for a game that's calling out for Conrad, against an opponent that you think would be at his level being LJ, a team that most likely is going to be in the second division next year, then I don't understand why he doesn't enter in this competition. So now that I'm done with that academy rant, let's try to be more positive. Because in the 87th minute, Puj on for Pedri. As I said, Puj, the substitute for Pedri. Pedri good in this match. He's a starter, no questions. But again, nice to see Puj getting another opportunity to show what he's got. And he did just that. If Coleman's only going to give him three minutes plus stoppage time, well, he'll have to score his first Barcelona goal in the 89th minute. De Jong, though, does 90% of the work, riding two tackles, something he did well all match, then getting to the goal line and lobbing the ball over for the Puj header. Puj running between the defenders. He still had something to do here. Wasn't completely unmarked. Runs between the two defenders at the back post and finishes with conviction, getting some nice air on his jump as well. Maybe that's air Puj, but as we know, he is not very tall at all, so I can't imagine that's going to happen too many times. Because did you have Puj's first Barca goal from a header? Yeah, neither did I. But Puj opens up his Barcelona tally. Again, wonderful to see. This goal doesn't change the minutes he's getting, but a player playing with his kind of confidence is pushing and pushing and pushing against Komen's not wanting to play him and forcing the Dutch manager to give him minutes, which is great to see. So 2 nothing. A solid performance, not great, but most importantly, without Dest, without Messi, they wind up getting another road win where they actually have played well. And yes, without fans, whether you're at home, whether you're on the road, it doesn't make too much of a difference, but Barcelona at least getting the job done, three points. I know kool want to see beautiful football, and this was not that. But again, there are bright signs, there are positives to try to take from it, not just the Pooh's goal, but De Young's performance, Pedri coming alive in that second half. Busquets, he was fine throughout the match. Again, Umtiti, I was happy to see. And Ter Stegen coming up big when he had to. There were other disappointments that I didn't even mention. Yeah, I went the entire match through without saying Antoine Griezmann, the center forward's name. That's not a good sign. But I will try to be positive and maybe we'll be a little more negative on the podcast this week. So that wraps that up. 2-0 win for Barcelona against LJ. And as always, until next time, Borussia Barca.